I'm going to speak to you now about reciprocal and rational functions. I like this. Don't judge a book by its cover. My mouth if we had a picture of uh, someone enjoying themselves. I didn't enjoy myself at all. Ha. Uh, hopefully that's not the case here. So a reciprocal function it helps to know what that even is. So let me just write that down for you. A reciprocal function is just 1 over x. That's it. So let's uh, try to figure out what are the asymptotes here. Now remember how we do a vertical asymptote? Vertical asymptote, we set the denominator. I'll write this down once here, because we remember what to do. Here we set the denominator equal to zero. An asymptote, remember, is where it's not defined. And remember what we do for horizontal ones? We set, uh, for example, x equals infinity or minus infinity. That's what we do here. So let's think about this. If we made the denominator equal zero here, uh, one over zero, Mm, that would be the problem right there. So this is this is actually the, the answer. X is just zero. See that that is actually the answer that makes this happen. Whoops, not not one, zero. There we go. That was silly of me. There we go. So we have x equals zero because dividing by zero makes this whole thing blow up. You can't divide by zero, you get infinity. That's why it makes it sort of blow up. That means I know that there is um at x equals 0, which is right here, there is a vertical asymptote. That means there's a place here where it can't quite reach. All right, how about horizontal asymptotes? I said x equals to infinity. Well, 1 over infinity, what does that give you? Uh, well, that gives you 0. So we say y equals 0 in this case. Well, that means that's a y value of 0. That's this flat line like this. If that's the case, the reciprocal function goes like this. If you're not sure, you can always just try putting in like x equals 1, you'll see you'll get y equals 1. So therefore, it must be in this top right quadrant. And if you put in like negative 1, you get negative 1. So you know it's down here. And it's not allowed. To, it doesn't cross this. It doesn't cross this. This is our reciprocal function. Now, I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to actually copy it. If I can be really good here. Oops. Just get rid of this one. I'm going to try to take this here and copy it for a reason in a second here. So I'll take that. I'll do copy. What I'm going to do now is take a look at this thing, because I have a pro tip for you, and that is that the reciprocal is its own inverse. Let me show you what in the world do I mean by this. I mean that if we wanted to try to find the inverse of this, do you remember what we do for an inverse? For inverse, remember, first of all, uh, it helps to maybe write down or remember what an inverse is. That's what we write f minus 1 to x like this. That means inverse. It doesn't mean 1 over f. There's two ways to do it, right? We could do it graphically. Remember uh, how we do these? I don't know if you remember this from before, but uh, we've shown you this in other videos. We could do it graphically. Uh, and what do we do by that? We just reflect across uh, the line y equals x. So let's see how that looks. That means if I did this, I would reflect across the line y equals x. Well, it should look something like this. Do you notice so this thing here is going to be the same on that side as that side, same as that side on that side? So I would say then that this thing here is actually the same. So in other words, I would say that the inverse of x then must be just 1 over x as well. So to see, a reciprocal function is its own inverse. See, when you do the, the, you do the inverse of it and you still get the same thing. We could also do it mathematically if we wanted. Remember what we do mathematically? We have a couple steps to do. Remember, we go first, we uh, write with x's and y's. Then we switch x and y. And then we solve for y. So let me actually do this. So I'm going to write it in y's and x's form. So let me do that now. So uh, if I write it like this, well, instead of f of x, I'll write it as y. So y equals 1 over x. Now I switch x's and y's, so now it becomes x equals 1 over y. And now I want to solve for y. So to get y by itself, I'd multiply it up here, so I'd have xy equals 1. And therefore, to get y by itself, I divide both sides by x, I get 1 over x. Therefore, I could say that my inverse of x equals 1 over x. Do you see it's the same thing? So that's why I've sort of shown you that the reciprocal function is its own inverse. That's because we go like this. Now that's a very specific one of 1 over x. We have a more generic kind, which are called rational functions. I don't know if you remember what a rational number is, but anything that's rational means it can be written as a fraction, any kind of fraction. 
And I just thought this one was funny. While his Pavlov's hair is so soft, he conditioned it. Get it. Oh. If you don't know about Pavlov, well, he did something about uh, conditioning dogs, I think it was, by ringing a bell and making them salivate so they're conditioned to expect it. It's very interesting from a psychology point of view. In any case, if we have a rational function, let's deal with that. Let's write down a rational function. It's a generic thing that you could actually write as a fraction. So we're going to have some different coefficients. We can write it like this. Now, this isn't in your formula booklet, uh, but just knowing a little bit about them, I think, is an important thing. So a and b and c and d, those are just coefficients. Okay, so a, b, c, d, they're just constants. Okay, so they're just numbers, like 2 or 5 or negative 8 or something like that. Okay, they're, neg they're just regular constants. Well, how do we do a vertical asymptote? Remember, we do the same thing as before. Vertical asymptotes are always where we set a denominator uh, equals 0. Remember the horizontal asymptote? We set the uh, x equals infinity. Let's see what we get here. Well, for this generic, uh, very generic one here with a's and b's and c's that we've got going on, let me see if I can actually do something with it. So I've got my denominator equals 0. All right, what can I do with this? Oops, I'm just going to try to bring this over. Well, my denominator is cx plus d. Isn't that my denominator? So I'm going to set my denominator, which is this, equals 0. Then what do I get? Because I'm trying to find out what x equals. Do you see how I have cx equals minus d? And therefore, I have that x equals, because I just moved my d over, by the way, it's a minus. I want to divide by c, so I'll have that minus d over c. In general, that will always be my vertical asymptote. So maybe that really helps to know. So my vertical asymptote, that's va, is always x equals minus d over c. I mean, it helps to know this. But you can always just figure it out. If you just know vertical asymptotes are when the denominator is 0, horizontals are when x equals infinity, you don't really need this generic version. You can just figure it out on the fly, but oh well. Let's see if we can do the next one. If I want to set this one here, I'm going to do f of infinity. Well, That's going to give me, let's see, it's going to be a times infinity plus b. All that divided by c times infinity plus d. Now, remember, um, doing something right here with inf uh, adding or subtracting or something like that does nothing to it. So in other words, we're just going to have, uh, those are going to essentially just cancel out. When we're talking about big, big numbers like infinity, adding something to infinity means nothing because you can't add a number to infinity. So this kind of disappears. So does that one. So now I'm left with just, and again, that's a bit weird, but if you think about big, big numbers like 5 billion, well, 5 billion plus 2, it's essentially still 5 billion. We don't care about the plus 2. You know, so adding a small number to a, you know, 50 trillion or something will do essentially nothing. That's why we just ignore them. Well, now we ended up with, uh, we have A times infinity over C times infinity. And good news, the infinities here will cancel out. So those will cancel out. So what do we get then? We get that the Y value is going to be just A over C. So that's what I'm going to say for my vertical asymptote, right? So at least I'll also write it maybe in black like this. I'll say, all right, so y equals just a over c. So that means if I really wanted to sort of write it all out, I'd say the horizontal asymptote then would just be y equals a over c. All right. I mean, I think it's more important to be able to do these on a case-by-case -case basis instead of trying to memorize something like this because you don't get these on your formula booklet. Like I said, denominator is 0, x equals infinity. That's actually the only pieces you need. Let's do a practical example. So now we have some rational function, 2x plus 3 over x minus 1. What's the vertical asymptote? And if I sound like I'm being repetitive, good. Hopefully that means you know what to do. Vertical asymptote, what happens then? We set the denominator, I'll just say denom for short, equals 0. Well, if I set the denominator equals 0, what do I get then? That means I have x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, I have x equals, well, I'll move the minus 1 over, I have 1. So there we go. I have my vertical asymptote. And I can say that the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. Super. Let's do the horizontal asymptote. What happens then? Remember what we do? We do uh, f of infinity or negative infinity. Um, so if we do this right here, let's see. I've got 
2 times infinity plus 3, all that over infinity minus 1. Do you remember what we do with infinities? We adding or subtracting essentially does nothing, so we'll just ignore them. We end up with then 2 times infinity over infinity. Do you know what happens there? The infinities cancel out. I end up with just 2. So I can say, ah, okay, so x equals, whoops, not x. This is f of something, which is a y phi. So y equals 2. So I'll maybe put it down like this. I'll say, therefore, I'll say horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. And I'm done. I've fully solved this. That means if I actually wanted to try to um, sketch this, I could, right? I could actually try to sketch it. No? I could say something like, hmm, like this right here. So I'll just, uh, I mean, I don't even need a calculator for this. I'm trying to do this without a calculator if I can, just to try to figure out how powerful these tricks are. So I got x's and I got y. Now, I know my x value of 1 is going to be special here. I know I'm going to have a vertical asymptote there, so something like this. Oops, except I can't seem to line things up. There we go, like that. And I have y equals 2 as my horizontal horizontal one, so this is 2, this is 1. So then I'll go like this. Say so do, 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 like this. There we go. Now it helps to know which quadrants I'm in. So let's just think about if I put in like, uh, I don't know, x equals 3. Let's just say put a 3 up here. 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. That's a positive number. This here is a positive number. It'll be somewhere up here. That means I know then that it'll go like this. Like that and like this. It's actually pretty powerful, isn't it? I don't know exactly where it crosses. I could figure those things out, couldn't I? But I think uh, that's at least the important part, just to do a really rough sketch of it. It goes something like this. Pretty powerful.